So my wife and I just got back from our honeymoon in Bora Bora and we stayed at the Intercontinental Le Moana Resort and we rounded up a couple of things that you might be interested in, things they don't really tell you about the resort, about Bora Bora, just in case you were thinking about booking a trip out here as well. The first thing you might wanna know about is the room. And the room is actually really good. There are a couple of things that could be a little weird depending on how well you and your partner know each other. Uh, there's really no privacy in the bathroom. There's no shower curtain. And the room that kind of separates the toilet, there's like a little sliding door is paper thin. In all honesty, if you've never pooped in front of your partner before, you're gonna be pooping in front of them at this and showering in front of them. Or if you're just going with friends for some reason, like if you have a group of friends, there is no privacy in the bathroom, which is, you know, which could be a thing as well. Unless you shut the door that leads to the bathroom. So like oh, there yeah. is a door that separates the bedroom from the bathroom. So you yes. could shut that and take a shower and have privacy. Yeah, but we then, didn't think about that. But what I, I was just thinking like you can't even like you can't go use the sink or anything and the safe is in there as well because the closet with the safe which is where we put all our clothes so like you can't really access the bathroom if someone's using that and water gets everywhere because there's no shower curtain pick a different resort i would say look at if that's a concern for you look at the other resorts also inside the room this is the only place there's ac and it's really good it works well you have full control of the ac i would constantly go back and take little ac breaks because it is very hot here or there Second thing is water shoes. Now, when we were looking at resorts, none of the resort websites really say anything about water shoes, or if they did, we didn't see it. We found out through YouTube videos and you found out through like a Facebook group. I was actually not wanting to get water shoes. She finally convinced me and I'm so glad we did because there's coral everywhere. They, they have coral under the bungalows. Uh, because you know it helps the fish come because you're swimming with the fishes a lot and then there are also a lot of sea urchins like a lot of sea urchins everywhere fortunately we didn't step on any like it wasn't a big deal but we did step on a decent amount of coral because the coral kind of washes up on the beach and you will cut your feet it will not be comfortable you need to bring water shoes for sure number three on the list is food and restaurants we paid to go ahead and have the breakfast buffet included with our room which we are really happy that we did yeah the breakfast buffet is amazing it was my favorite meal every day it was kind of the same thing every day but it was also a little different every day so there was a little bit of variety but everything on the breakfast buffet is so good we would go we would stuff ourselves at breakfast because it was like it was phenomenal food and they have a bunch of different stuff from different cultures so like there's like beans for breakfast and rice which in america we don't usually eat beans and rice at breakfast but but it's really cool to see all the different options and just try it and without having to worry about paying for it because like you can just try everything of all these different foods you've never had before which is cool on the actual resort itself there are only two restaurants there's like this bar restaurant called vinnie vinnie and then there's like a nice sit-down restaurant that requires a reservation um we found them both to be pretty good the food is pretty good they are really overpriced which is to be expected because you're on a resort um but other than that there's really not a lot of options the menu stays the same every day uh, there are no changes one cool thing uh one night there was like this festival event where they had like this dancing thing and it was an all-you-can-eat buffet that was really the only time the food changed and that buffet was expensive but it was worth it because you get like a whole show uh, and again, you can just go and try all the different food. Like, I think you tried every single dessert they had. They had every single dessert that they have on the menus at the buffet, and each dessert is like 12 to $15, and I got every single dessert. I think it was like six or seven desserts. The buffet was $75, and I ate all those desserts, so I think it paid for itself. Yeah. Just Def eating dessert. <laughs> yeah, definitely worth it for sure. Number four is the language. Everyone there speaks English, but it is not their first language. We didn't really have any problems. There were only two or three times where there was a type of language barrier where I was I was asking for like no lettuce on a burger or something and she didn't quite understand what was happening. Um, but it, it worked out in the end. I got the food that I wanted, it was fine. But a little bit of French will probably help you like if you can order in French or just say you know hello basic things in French I'm sure they would appreciate it as well because you're trying to learn their language the natives speak Tahitian but 
because we're in French Polynesia, everyone also speaks French. That's like most of their second language or their first language. But like I said, it's not necessary, um, but a little bit would probably, uh, probably be helpful. I think it's important to understand that a lot of people that go there speak French, but just be kind and know that they may not speak English perfect and that's on you because you're going somewhere where they speak French. So don't expect them to speak perfect English. Yeah, we saw some rude people there and they were being very rude to the people that couldn't speak perfect English even though we're in a foreign country. Kind of messed up. Don't be that guy. <laughs> Number five is the Tahiti Airport. It is god awful. It is so bad. Again, no AC anywhere. Bathrooms are very gross and it's like an open air airport. So once you get through security, they're there's a whole section of the airport that's just open air. You can just kind of walk outside. So nothing is enclosed. There's no insulation to keep any of the cool air inside. And it is just super hectic and crazy. So many things were going on. And they had a bunch of music and like live performances, which was cool, <laughs> but we were trying to go home. This is when we were leaving to go back to America. And it was so insane. There were just so many people. It, it is very stressful. Yeah, I think if you get headaches, this is not a good airport for you. <laughs> I got a migraine immediately. I haven't been to that many airports. Like, obviously I've been to the Charlotte airport and we went to LAX. I feel like LAX and Charlotte are like labeled so well, like you can find everything by looking at the signs. But in the Tahiti airport, I felt like the signs didn't tell me where anything was. Um, yeah, and the signs like weren't just in like French or Tahitian, they were in English, but the signs we saw didn't really have any arrows or anything saying like this concourse here or this here, like it was just kind of everywhere. The people there are very friendly and they helped us. For example, on the way there, we landed and we had like 15 minutes to get to our short flight from Tahiti to Bora Bora, which is only like an hour but we were not gonna make it through security because it was so hectic and there were so many people. There were probably 200 plus people in front of us and we had to get through security, get our bags checked and get all this stuff done. And I just went up to somebody and just asked, hey, look, we're about to miss our flight or I showed them our boarding pass and stuff and they were super helpful and just let us skip the line and we made it to our flight like it, was, like it wasn't a problem. So although the airport is very hectic, I think the people are very friendly and they want to, they want to make sure you get to your destination. So. If you're in a similar situation, don't be afraid to ask because if I if I wouldn't have asked, we would have missed our flight and had to do something else. Okay, number six is flying overnight. Uh, I think almost all the flights are overnight, could be wrong, but most of the ones we saw were all overnight. Uh, Air Tahiti Nui, which is the long flight that leaves from LAX all the way to Tahiti. Uh, it's like seven and a half hours, eight hour flight is absolutely wonderful. They provide you with sleeping masks, small pillows and blankets, and you need to sleep. Uh, this flight, we were kind of dreading this flight because it's the longest flight either of us have ever taken. We slept for probably five to six hours and it felt like it went by so fast. I have no problems with it. Uh, so just sleep and you'll be fine. Number seven is the time change, or Bora Bora and Tahiti are six hours behind where we live, which is in North Carolina. So like the Eastern Standard Time. So for us, if it's 12 o'clock in the afternoon here, it's 6 a.m. there. We actually tried to adjust to the time change. Was it one day oh, before? Only a day. One we day before. One. And I, I think there's a bunch of like articles you can read online. Just look up like how to adjust to a time change. And that was really helpful. Number eight is bug spray and sunscreen. It's a humid environment, so there are a lot of bugs. Um, we live in the south, so we're kind of used to the bugs and stuff. We really don't know how bad it, it is because... It felt normal to me, It felt honestly. normal, but we also use bug spray every day. And we had the little uh, centronella bracelets to help keep bugs off of us as well whenever we weren't swimming. We were fine. We didn't really get... We didn't get any bug bites no. the whole time we were there. No. It's hard to know. Like, was it just really not that bad or is it just because we use. wore the the bug bracelets, I don't yeah, know. Not sure. Sunscreen though is very important. It gets very hot and the, what is it? The, the UV index is kind of crazy during the middle of the day from like 10 or 11 a.m. to four or five p.m. During that time, make sure you are lathered up because you will get sunburned. Yeah. Even if you're a person not prone to sunburn, just, just wear sunscreen. And sunscreen there is pretty expensive to buy. So if you can pack sunscreen, that's the best thing to do. Yeah, because we packed carry-ons, 
we couldn't check our liquids. So we could only get the travel size sunscreens. So we had like six of those little travel size sunscreens and both our uh, liquids bags. And it worked out. We actually didn't even run out. I think we had the perfect amount. I think we had one uh, can of that left over, so. Try to find reef friendly sunscreen because that's what they want you to use there because using certain sunscreens really damages the coral and they really want you to try and take care of the environment because that's why Bora Bora is so amazing because of the coral. So if you're wearing sunscreen that damages the coral, then you're kind of Defeated. messing up yeah. The, yeah. the environment. Yeah. Number nine goes back to the restaurant thing. This probably could have been one thing, but in the restaurants, uh, at least at the resort, if you ask for water, they will bring you bottled water. Um, this is like a European thing. They don't really give you tap water unless you ask for it. The tap water is safe to drink, so don't be afraid to drink it, but you have to specifically ask for tap water or they're gonna bring you a bottle of water which charges to your account. We are not alcoholic drinkers. We don't really drink a lot, so for us, we just wanted to drink water with our meals, especially because it's so hot, we were trying to stay hydrated. So if you want water, if you're trying to save a buck or two, uh, make sure you ask specifically for tap water. And the Le Moana Resort, they provide you with a reusable water bottle, which you can keep when you leave. It's kind of a fun souvenir. Um, they have water fill stations around the resort that you can fill up your water bottle, and it's, it's good water. I'm picky about water, but it tastes good in case you're wondering. Yeah, and they're not just like water fountains, they're like full on like water refill stations mm -hmm. for your water bottles, which is really cool. And they provide you with that water bottle when you get there, which is awesome. Mm -hmm. So there's plenty of t chances for you to get water and things like that without having to pay for it. So. Yeah, so if you wanna save money, drink the tap water. Yeah, because those drinks are expensive. And the last thing on the list is the weather. I think we got really lucky with our weather, which really I think there's pretty much always good weather. Um, you have to pay attention to when their rainy season is and when their dry season is. We went during the dry season, um, but it did rain one day for five minutes, but literally five minutes. Yeah. Like we've mentioned several times, it's very hot, very humid, so wear light clothing. Uh, you don't, you're not going to need anything heavy, and like we said, if you're not there in the rainy season, you're not going to need like a raincoat or a rain jacket or any of that. Because of the weather, it can be kind of iffy sometimes. There were really strong gusts of wind, which was causing like currents and bigger waves, which there aren't really any waves in the lagoon. But April here uh, got kind of swept away by one of these currents and was hit against one of the uh, support beams of the bungalows which has coral and stuff on it. And she has a little scrape on her hip area. Like, I think anybody can go here, even if you're not a good swimmer. But if you're, we are excellent swimmers and that still happened. So just be aware of that. The currents can be pretty strong and just, it'll just be like one every now and then. We'll just come with like a little mini wave and just kind of, you know, move your whole body. So just be aware of your surroundings while you're swimming because, you know, you really want to try to protect the coral and not hit anything and hurt yourself. Like sometimes when it's windy, the water is not as calm as it usually is. But when the water is calm, it is literally like a swimming pool. We would get out there early in the morning and it was perfect because really there's not a lot of wind early in the morning and we would just go out at sunrise and look and get in sometimes. Yeah. Uh, it was great. So at the end of the day, we had a wonderful honeymoon. Everything about this trip was pretty much perfect. Everything kind of worked out for us. It was very amazing. I would, I would do it again for sure. Um, but this has been kind of our list of things that we kind of came together to just kind of talk about and let people know about if you're considering taking a trip out to Bora Bora, specifically to the resort that we stayed at, the Intercontinental Le Moana. If you have any more questions or some things that we didn't talk about in this video, just leave them down in the comments and I will try to respond to as many as possible. And uh, yeah, that's going to do it. Thanks for watching and catch you in the next one. Peace. You want to say bye?